diabetes and these sexual transmitted infections may be due to bacterial viral fungal or parasitic infection passed on during sexual activity and sexually transmitted infection can result in the following symptoms one symptom is that that the discharge from penis or vagina another symptom patient might come with pain during micturition another symptom there might be pelvic or genital pain another symptom patient might come to you with swelling in the genital area or lumps next slide please so another signs most of the patients are coming with those different types of genital ulcers so when a patient is coming to you with genital ulcers we have to assess the patient eh? whether it is painless or it is painful and accordingly it will guide you to the diagnosis of sti sometimes patient might come to you with genital rashes also especially in case of syphilis or secondary syphilis in case of abnormal sex patient might come to you with anal symptoms related to sexual behaviors so any of the symptoms on after unprotected sex or change in partner please consult your doctor please next slide okay so there are lots of sexually transmitted infections the common ones are syphilis gonorrhea bacterial vaginosis chancroid chlamydia hepatitis b virus genital herpes genital wart hiv infection granuloma inguinally and lymphogranuloma venereum out of this uh, there are several which are caused by bacteria like syphilis gonorrhea chancroid and some are are caused by virus like hepatitis b virus this is not our uh, topic today's discussion uh, another is genital herpes eh? nowadays this is very common and uh, another is genital warts caused by human papilloma virus and the famous hiv infection hiv it is also caused by bacteria so next slide please okay so if if we go one by one if we summarize syphilis so syphilis is a disease caused by a spirochete known as streptococcus pallidum and usually it is sexually transmitted in our country uh, there is no specific epidemiological study but uh, most of the uh, reference are taken from united states in the united states syphilis disproportionately affects men who have sex with men or and black peoples <clears throat> thing so uh, most common and recognizable manifestations are usually cutaneous manifestations but we must remember that syphilis is a systemic disease if we if it is and usually the incubation period of syphilis is 10 to 90 days and the most common symptoms is chancre is chancre that is a painless ulcer when the trypanosoma pallidum enters into the skin usually initially it causes a small papule and then this papule will be ulcerated and the ulcer is usually found on the glans penis usually in the coronal sulcus or in the shaft or in case of abnormal sexual behavior it might be found in an, in oral cavity or mucosa membrane but the most common site is the glans penis coronal sulcus and shaft of the penis usually the ulcer is one usually solitary ulcer but there might be sometimes multiple ulcerations and the ulcers is usually
শুনতে পাচ্ছি না Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. So just it's better to speak without microphone. Anyhow, so I was talking about shank shankar, and the shankar is usually found is in the glans penis, coronal sulcus, or in the shaft. This is the common site. Shankar is usually painless. It starts as a small papule which ulcerates rapidly, and the ulcer is clean ulcer. The syphilitic ulcer is clean ulcer with raised border. and there are minimum exudation is there and this is the most important sign which is found in case of primary syphilis and if we treat if we do not treat it even the shankar will heal up within one week and the patient will go to into secondary stage and the secondary stage is the most important feature characterized by different types of skin lesions one is the appearance of uh, papulo squamous lesion that means that there are uh, small papules and small macules and sometimes scale will de develop on the different parts of the body and it may come and it may go and usually if unnoticed or untreated it may spread to other area also the palmar plantar area is the most common site of papulosquamous lesion of secondary syphilis and uh, sometimes it may also come with or without lymph adenopathy next slide please and then another is this secondary syphilis also there will be other features i got on on this condyloma leta it is not mentioned here i am just telling condyloma leta it is a soft papule usually found in the perianal area and also in the intertrienous area one point we should remember that the condyloma leta is full of trypanosoma pallidum and highly infectious and the another sign of the secondary syphilis the uh, involvement of yeah in the scalp and it may cause to as a diffuse fall of hair or patchy alopecia moth eaten alopecia and this uh period if is untreated it will go to latent period of variable durations latent period of variable so one thing is that the secondary syphilis usually starts two months after inoculation of the organisms and it may persist up to six months then the symptoms and the signs of secondary syphilis will disappear and the patient will go to a latent period of latent syphilis we call it latent syphilis and this is very variable duration and some people are dividing it in the two categories early latent period and early late latent period first one or two years is considered as an early latent period and after that it is considered as a late latent period and this latent period of syphilis usually there will be no signs and symptoms only only we can detect syphilis at this stage with serological test serological test of syphilis like vdrl venereal disease research laboratory or trypanosoma pallidum tph test otherwise it is not possible and in this period usually and if they it is present in case of female they may transmit they may transmit this syphilis to the fetus of the baby leading to congenital syphilis so in all cases any pregnant lady eh, always must be no need of any history eh, should be screened for syphilis because we know we remember that the congenital syphilis has a very bad consequence eh? we are, we want to remove it or we want to treat it as early as possible then if it is also untreated it will pass to tertiary age with I, i tell you before i told you before that the syphilis initially as a skin disease mainly manifestation in the skin and mucous membrane but if it is untreated it will slowly slowly involve 
the neurological systems, cardiovascular systems, and eh? that's found in case of tertiary syphilis, the neurosyphilis and cardiovascular syphilis, and the consequence is very bad in these cases. And uh, that's in a nutshell, if I here that's in the slide mentioned about the treatment of syphilis, the drug of choice is benzocilin, benzocilin policilin, and the dose schedule, I will tell it later on. And one thing we should remember that any syphilis patient should be screened for other STD. When one STD is present, there is highly high chance of presence of other, other mal STD, especially in this era of HIV infection. And if HIV is present, the symptoms and signs of syphilis will be totally different. Right? It will be more aggressive and the response to treatment will be less and the patient is very, um, very highly susceptible to develop immunodeficient status. Next slide, please. So in a, in a, in a, in a, in a nutshell, I just look at the slide. I told you before the stages of syphilis. When the patient will be infected, the incubation period is, is 10 to 90 days. Okay, in this, after that, the primary shankar will develop. And this shankar usually persists one week or maximum three weeks. After that, the secondary stage will start and after two months, usually. And this secondary stage may persist up to six months. And secondary stage is featured with skin and cutaneous manifestations. And then the latent period will start. And it is if it is more than one year, then it will be late latent. One year is considered early latent. After that, it will go to tertiary states. And in this tertiary phase of syphilis, 16% is late benign, and other cases are involving. Cardiovascular, 10%, and neurosyphilis, 5 to 10%. Okay, please go to next slide. So now I will show you some photographs because photographs are more, much more effective than the lectures. You know, if you remember this photo, you will can you can diagnose many patients as early as possible. Look at the first picture on the left side. There is a shankar on the penile shaft. This base is clean base. You can remember minimum exudation is there, but the border is elevated on the shaft of the penis. This is the common side. But uh, the picture on the right side, you can see multiple shankers are there, and some shankers are making uh, coalescing together. And in this stage, might be difficult only by clinical diagnosis. And in that case, yes, you may need uh, serological test. So any patient coming with this genital ulcer, please ask him about the history first. History first. Is there any history of exposure? Sometimes patients are unwilling to tell you the true history, but if you counsel him and make confident him that it will be secret, not to other people, only between you and the patient, then he will give you the, usually most patients will give you the accurate history. So try to find out the exact exposure and the appearance. So we can detect if it is 10 to 90 days, most likely it is going to syphilitic shankar. Another other ulcer, other ulcer, which may confuse you, one is shankroid ulcer. One is shankroid ulcer. Shankroid ulcer, the incubation period is short, eh? two to seven days or nine days maximum. And the ulcer is painful. So this is a very distinguishing point. Any patient coming with the painful ulceration and the duration of incubation is short, please first think about Shankroid, Shankroid. Another confusion which might you sometimes that the her genital herpes, genital herpes, the viral cause, cause especially the herpes two virus. It also sometimes may present with ulceration, but the presentation will be different. The patient will tell you that initially there were several vesicles. Eh? Vesicles means that the, any fluid fields lesions it will come in the grouping and there will be painful. Then it may turn to different ulcerations. So the common causes of genital ulcer first is 
expensive Vedic Shankar. Number two is Shankroid. Shankroid. Number three is herpes simplex related ulcer. Another is lymphogranuloma paniria, LGV, lymphogranuloma paniria. But that ulcer is also painless. So only painful ulcer you will get in case of chancroid and in case of herpes simplex virus infection. But the presentation is totally different if you take the proper history. So any STI management, proper history and reassurance of the patient is always very important. The history will tell you the whether it is viral STD or it is bacterial STD. Viral STD, usually there is some vesicle formation. Primary lesion is vesicle. vesicle what is vesicle? A vesicle is a small fluid field lesion. It is size is less than one centimeter. But in case of chancroid or this uh, syphilitic lesion, the initial lesion will be papule. Papule means it is an elevated lesion. It is an elevated lesion and the size is less than one centimeter. Then this papule will turn to ulceration. In case of syphilis, the ulceration is painless. In case of chancroid, the ulceration is painful. And in case of herpes, the initial presentation is not papule. Initial presentation is small vesicular lesions, multiple grouping together, and it is painful. Then it will lead to different types of ulceration. So again, the common causes of genital ulceration, number one, syphilis, number two, chancroid, number three, ulceration due to herpes genitalis, number four, lymphogranuloma venerea. This next slide. So that first picture was a shanker in case of male. What about in case of female? I tell you, in female is very difficult. It's very difficult to detect shanker because it is maybe within the vagina or inside the cervix. Sometimes if it is present in the perianal area or in the labia minora or labia majora, then you can detect it. Otherwise, it's very difficult. So look at this picture here, the left one, there is a shanker in case of ulcer covered with, let me show you the, an ulcer covered with a fibrin and nicotine slab on the orifice of the urethra. The orifice of the urethra. And then, on the right picture, another shanker in the perianal area. Perianal area. So, uh, again, I want to mention that the detection of shanker is in is very difficult in case of female. Not only that, all symptoms in case of female, it may be sometimes unnoticed, undetected, and it may persist for a long time, leading to different complications. So always, always, the history is very important. When you get a patient, always ask about him, about the partners, about his partner, whether he has a single partner or multiple partners. It will get healthy. So these are the shankas in case of female, and it's very difficult to detect early as it is mostly inside vagina or cervical canal. And sometimes if it is in the labia majora or labia majora, you may detect it, but most of the cases, sometimes it is undetected. So next slide, please. So, if I again summarize, again summarize the lesions. Now, Shankar's differential diagnosis, it is written in a nutshell. The most common is heart simplex, Shankroid, granuloma inguinally, lymphogranuloma venerium. And one more important thing is that sometimes non infectious STI eh, may cause some ulceration on the genitalia. That is not related to the STD, but we have to remember it. Because sometimes patient might get some traumatic erosion or ulcer and on the glands penis or some disease like Bachelor's disease, Bachelor's disease, squamous cell carcinoma, basal cell carcinoma. And one more important thing I want to mention you that the fixed drug reaction. Fixed drug reaction is that any patient, if it is susceptible to the drug, he or she will develop a vesicular lesion or bully in the same area. And most of the cases, it is on the glands penis. We get many patients in our OPD. It is a fixed up reactions. Then when the 
bully will rupture, it will lead to ulcer. It will lead to ulcer. So we must remember also that point also. Right? Sometimes patient there might be no history of any exposure. And yes, or she has history of some history of some what can I say? Here she has some history of taking some drugs, especially metronidazole, doxycycline, tetracycline, and this might cause some oculus lesion on first on the glance penis and then on the other area and leading to ulceration. So we have to remember this point. One is STI-related ulcer, genital ulcer. One another is some non-infectious cause ulcers. Eh? We have to remember it also that, that. Otherwise, it will lead to some uh, social problems. And some, because especially in the family, it causes problems. Sometimes uh, one partner is affected and the other partner is, is, is suspecting that he or she or might have some sort of promiscuity. But the real cause is not that. It is a drug reaction eh? mimicking a ulcer Separating ulcer or other uh, in STI related ulcer on the genitalia. Next slide, please. So, this is a more picture about uh, secondary syphilis. About secondary syphilis, I will show you. Uh, the secondary syphilis, you must remember that it is a great mimicker. It is a great mimicker. One thing is that. Always remember, it may present to you in any forms, like this picture on the left side. You know, there is some shiny papular lesions. Huh? We call it lichen planus like lesion or lichenoid lesion. Huh? See, these civility eruptions may mimic like lichen like planus. Violaceous, the surface is smooth, shiny, polygonal papules. Huh? resembling lichen planus, but actually this is not lichen planus, this is the rash of secondary syphilis. Another picture on the right side is, you can see there on the body, there are some macules and papules. Uh, macules, what is macule? Macule, I tell you again, macule is only color change, only color change in the surrounding area. If the color change is less than one centimeter, we call it macule. If the color change is more than one centimeter, we call it patch. This picture on the right side is showing multiple macular lesions eh? and there is no scale. Usually lesions here are oval, pink shaped and the border is ill-defined macules. Eh? But some lesions are coalescing together, making patches. So these are the features of secondary syphilis. And this is pictures we have to remember in the differential diagnosis and only serological test for syphilis we can detect. Otherwise, it's very difficult eh? that sometimes some patient, some person will tell you that the dark field examination. One, one procedure is that uh, if we squeeze one papule eh, as, and take the fluid and make it a, on a glass slide and under dark field, uh, field examination, we can detect sometimes the trypanopalidium. It is a quark screw like. But this test usually is not done nowadays because it is sometimes non specific and maybe mixed with other infections. So we are still referring the serological test for syphilis. So please go to the next slide. So another presentation, I tell you, in skin, we always remember that our skin color is variable from country to country. And there are several types of skin color. Like in our country, the skin color is, is brown color. There is another is a type one type two skin, a white skin color. Another is dark skin color. The dark skin color, the presentation is a little bit different. Different. You can see here the papulosquamous syphilitic eruption. Here you can see the these are the lesions. There are some scalars there, some erythema is there, and well demarcated, well demarcated. And this is flattened pap uh, papula. This is uh, this is uh, these are papules, but these are plaques. Now, one remember thing there. What is plaque? Plaque is when the size is more than one centimeter and the lesion is elevated. Then we call it plaques. This is the plaque, and these are the small uh, papules and we are coalescing together with the scales. Right? Scales. This is also features of secondary syphilis. Let's go to the next slide. So the most important finding is, is the most important find of secondary syphilis. You can see that the this is very characteristic on the palm and sole. Palm and sole. Very uh, in our OPD practice, we get 
this type of lesions. And always, if we get it, please put the differential diagnosis of secondary siblings. In the body or trunk, it is a little bit non-specific, but this type of discrete macular, papules, uh, diffuse, sometimes scaling, sometimes scaling, eh? sometimes scaling, sometimes a non-scaling, or sometimes hyperkeratotic, eh? hyperkeratotic, little bit thickening. These are very susceptible or, or very diagnostic of secondary civility. So this picture on the on the left, you can see these are small macules are there, also their papules are there. This is palmoplantar uh, palm, palmar lesions, macule papula, papula, macula papula lesion, macula papula lesion. And usually no itching is there, no itching there. One time, sometimes some viral infections will cause this type of lesions on the palm and soul, but those lesions are usually associated with itching. But secondary civilis lesions, usually there is no itching. It's very important. Please remember it. And this one, this hyperkeratotic scaly lesions, you can get it in many other causes, but not like this. In case of psoriasis, it might come in, but not like this. In this one, it is maybe diffuse, uh, other areas scatter, but it is here, it is localized on the two or two or three areas. Please go to next slide. Another. Uh, I, I, was, I mentioned about before the involvement of secondary civilis on the scalp or loss of hair. Right? This picture on the right is moth eaten, moth eaten, alopecia, moth eaten, moth eaten, eh? moth eaten. Moth eaten, alopecia of secondary syphilis. And this is more common. And another type of alopecia due to syphilis, that is the diffuse alopecia. Diffuse alopecia, irregular patching, but the, yeah, the alopecia is non scarring. Yeah? Non scarring. Non scarring. Some alopecia are scarring, that means the permanent loss of hair, but this is non scarring, means that the hair will come again when the syphilis will be treated. So this is the picture of moth eaten secondary syphilis, which is very common and usually found on the occipital area and also occasionally in the eyebrow and the beard area also. And the right picture here you see, I told you before that the genital rash, genital rash also is very important. Sometimes it may guide you to the diagnosis. And this picture, look at this picture. There are, these are the papules, these are the papules. These are the non itchy, non itchy. This is very important. We get people in other other diseases also, and those is, uh, those rashes are usually itchy. But this papular lesions found here on the glands, on the glands, on the shaft, on the scrotum. These are non itchy, and these are the features of secondary civilitic papules on the penis, and this. Papules, don't touch it. Please remember, I will tell you, don't touch it because this is full of trypanoperidia. If you suspect anything, use always the gloves. Use always gloves and always try to find out the history properly because history will guide you whether this is, it is related to STI or related to non-STI. Please go to next slide. Okay. So another picture of secondary civil is the condyloma later. You can see here, uh, condyloma later presenting as a papules or this is the plaques. And these are soft, usually soft in touch. Don't touch it again, I tell you. I, these lesions are full of, or teamed with trypanoma pallidia. And if we squeeze it and uh, make a slide and dark microscopy, we can see the corkscrew appearance of the trypanopalidium. So this condyloma letter usually found in the intertrizinous area in the perilation area, the moist area. The moist area at the site of this condyloma letter. This condyloma letter is the feature of secondary civilis. And uh, another picture on the right side. This is the bigger lesion, moist, flat top. This is black, eh? size more than one centimeter on the scrotum. On the, on the skeleton. So these are the condyloma letter is the feature of secondary symbols. Okay, please go to next slide. So in the differential diagnosis of papillosculture, 
vehicular papilla rash of secondary syphilis, we must have to think some disease also. One most likely one disease is that Pityasis rosea. Pityasis rosea. And Pityasis rosea is a also a virus related disease. Usually, it's a, it's a reactive process, and uh, we can differentiate it easily. And uh, if we take the history properly, another is drug reaction. I wonder a lot. I also mentioned that drug reaction. Drug reaction. Drug reaction is also a great mimicker. It can mimic to any types of lesions. Another is other viral virus. So many virus in our outside eh, may also come as a this papillary stomas lesions. Another is psoriatic. Psoriasis is not all psoriasis. The gutted psoriasis. Gutted psoriasis means that small range of like features. It will come in the differential diagnosis. Okay, please next slide. So uh, up until now, I told you about the secondary syphilis, and now the most serious part is tertiary syphilis. Tertiary syphilis eh? in untreated syphilis, fifteen percent of patient will develop. Fifteen percent of patient will develop benign syphilis, mostly skin lesions, but tertiary syphilis. Nowadays, it's less common. Less common because all the patients are usually getting treatment at certain stage of their time. And when the tertiary syphilis is, 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 will develop, if it is untreated, it is variable. Okay, usually, patient will give history of syphilis three to seven years duration. So, minimum it takes two years to develop tertiary syphilis, but the time is very variable. But the time is very variable. It may might take to 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, then the, the tertiary syphilis will develop. And it is marked by formation of gamma. They call it tertiary syphilis, is gamma tus infiltration. Eh? It is a necrotic area, individual area, erythematous, some papules, some nodules, some discharge, some ulceration, any form, or sometimes some scarring. Any forms, it can come here. So this picture, yes, see this one. Disfiguring, yeah? total is disfiguring. Gamma does infiltration of the glabella. Glabella, you can see that the punched out ulcerations, yeah? in duration, some violaceous color. And ulceration is also going down on the nose, uh, on the nose. So, gamma is the feature of tertiary syphilis. It is some sort of destruction of the tissue. Yeah? Destruction of the tissue, total disfigurement. And another picture on the on the right side, here you see two deep punched out ulcer in the popliteal fossa and covered with adherent yellow slabs at the base. And this is the classical appearance of nodular gamma. So gamma is a, in fact a Latin word. Eh? Latin word describes the rubbery lump, describes the rubbery lump or deep granulomatous lesion found in the subcutaneous tissue. And these tissues have tendency for necrosis and ulcerations. And there may be sometimes punched out ulceration, which is found here. Punched out ulcerations. So, tertiary syphilis is very important. And if it is unnoticed, it will lead to different types of complications, the neurosyphilis and neurosyphilis and other cardiovascular syphilis. Let's go to next slide. So same, go to next slide, please. Okay, more picture, pictures of aggressive, aggressive behavior of the tertiary syphilis. Here you can see, see, aggressive gamma of the forehead causing destruction of the Clavurium mimicking advanced destructive basal cell carcinoma. So I tell you, so in the differential diagnosis, always we should remember some some non-STI, STI related lesions. And uh, the picture on the right side, you can see here uh, different types of plaques. This is one plaque. Another, another. These are like psoriasis like plaque. I tell you. So this is a, uh, syphilis is a great mimicker. It can mimic to any disease. And in this picture, these pictures are resembling psoriasis. 
and the red color erythematous has covered with scales and maybe sometimes indistinguishable from psoriasis clinically. Then we have to do the serological test and sometimes we are doing also biopsy. Sometimes we are doing also biopsy. Okay, please go to next slide. Okay, so what are the differential diagnosis of tertiary syphilis? One is sarcoidosis, one is sarcoidosis. Some, I told you before, sometimes metastatic carcinoma or a squamous cell carcinoma, sometimes lymphoma, sometimes some types of vasculitis, some deep fungal infection. And one more common is that the cutaneous tuberculosis, cutaneous tuberculosis, uh, it sometimes be making that tertiary syphilis. Okay, please go to next slide. Uh, and a more picture of a, a here you can see here destruction of the nasal cartilage destruction of the nasal cartilage bone by gamma leading to saddle nose of the cartilage and skin so it is a huge mutilation so we have to detect it early eh? if it is untreated it may lead to like this eh? Uh, which is sometimes confuse you with the leprosy, with the leprosy, serious mutilation, serious disfigurement of the face. Okay, please go to next slide. So, okay, until now, we have talked clinical features. Now, how we manage the civilis? So, it depends on the staging of the civilis, on the staging of the civilis. And now, in this era of HIV, we, any syphilis patient, if we diagnose, also we should screen that patient for HIV. HIV. So look at this picture, uh, this figure. Here, stage of disease, primary or secondary. HIV status of the person should be screened. HIV and un, un, uh, infected, then we will give some long. Penicillin is the drug of choice. Penicillin is the drug of choice. Benzathin penicillin. Uh, usually, we are giving in each buttock. 1.2 million units, 2 million units intramuscular IM in a single dose. Single dose. And one thing you, I tell you, it is given IM, a deep IM, and it's very painful. And always before giving this benzathin penicillin, you should test whether the patient is hypersensitive to insulin. This is very, impo very important. Otherwise, it will lead to serious type of reaction if patient is sensitive to, to penicillin. So what do we do? We take a little amount of benzathil solution and put it in the skin, subcutaneous tissue. If any reaction, there will be erythema, then we will postpone it. That because the patient is sensitive, we will we'll go to other options. We will go to other options. If the, there is no hypersensitivity, then we will give benzathil penicillin 1.2 million units IM, deep IM, in, a, in each part of if the patient is alternative for penicillin, eh? here you can see alternative treatment for penicillin, allergic person. And even <coughs> the pregnancy, we cannot use this, this, this regimen. Because the, in this case, the drug of choice is doxycycline. Doxycycline, usually given 100 milligram orally twice daily for two weeks. But this patient should be follow up about after six, six to 12 months. And we have to screen it. We, how will we screen it? We tell you there is a serological test. We call it VDRL, Venal Disease Research Laboratory. And this titer is very important. It's correlating with the active infection of syphilis. It's correlating with the active infection of syphilis. If the titer, after treatment, the titer should be fall down, then we will think that the patient is responding to treatment. If the patient is HIV positive, HIV positive, then we have to give also benzathine penicillin and missing similar treatment. But the patient for follow up will be shorter. Follow up will be that patient without HIV six to twelve months, and this is three months, six months, nine months. There will be more more frequent follow ups. And if the patient is not detected in the in case of secondary stage. Then it will pass to latent period or tertiary syphilis. Then we have to give it aggressively. We are giving, here you can see that the 2.4 million units in each 
do it in a single dose and we'll give it for three weeks. We will give it for I am for three weeks, not one week or two weeks. And if it is again, skin test is mandatory. Skin is test is mandatory. And <coughs> if patient is sensitive, then we will switch over to doxycycline. But in this case, uh, doxycycline will be given for a long duration, usually given four weeks. And the follow up must be there. Follow up must be there. So, in summary, the treatment of choice in case of syphilis is benzathenicillin. Benzathenicillin. Before giving benzathenicillin, we should take a screen test, skin test, whether the patient is hypersensitive. If hypersensitive, we will give this benzathenicillin penicillin 2.4 million units, ranging to 7.2 million units. And if or she is sensitive, then we should treat her with doxycycline, ranging from two to four weeks. Okay, please go to the next slide. Okay, next next topic is uh, chancroid, another disease, chancroid. I told you before. So chancroid is also a sexually STI with acute ulcerative disease, usually localized anogenital area and often associated with inguinal adenitis or bubble. So this is the very important. In syphilis, you can get some limp adenopathy. That is a minor. But in chancroid, the with ulceration, one feature is there, very important, unilateral inguinal involvement, inguinal adenitis, limb adenopathy, or sometimes forming abscess or bubo. And the causative agent is in chancroid is hemophilus ducri. It is a gram-negative uh, organisms. And uh, in our uh, country, the it is less common, but in some area, it is more common in Africa and Caribbean and other area. And here, I already mentioned the ulcer is painful, soft ulcer. This is soft ulcer with ragged undermined margin. I told you the ulcer in case of syphilis is superficial, clean, and raised border. But in case of chancroid ulcer, it's painful and the soft ulcer with undermined margin. And usually it develops one to two weeks after inoculations. Usually, in the, it is found in the same area, in the like uh, prepuce, glands, penis, and sometimes frenulum, and in case of female, vulva, cervix, and perianal area. Okay, please go to next slide. In some cases, the chancroid facilitates the transmission of HIV. Like syphilis, we do not have any serological test for hemophilus ducri, but laboratory culture is possible, but it is better. We have a uh, greater sensitivity due to DNA amplification methods, huh? not available in our country, but laboratory culture is possible. And uh, hemophilus ducri, it is very effective by azithromycin, huh? usually given one gram single dose, but sometimes also safe drugs on safe drug on 250 milligram, I am a single dose treatment is given. Please go to the next slide. So I will show you some photo of chancroid. You can see here, the ulcer is in the, here, the glands, when is in the, 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 the sulcus area. And this, it is a dirty ulcer. It is a dirty ulcer, margin is not raised. It is a serpent demarcated, undermined, undermined. Ulcer here, it is in the glands penis and this is in the vulva. Vulva area, it is also see here, one ulcer, here is one ulcer. Ulcer, these are the ulcers here. And these ulcers are painful. Pain. These ulcers are painful. Please go to next slide. So, what are the differential diagnoses we should consider in case of? Chancroid ulcer, most likely is genital herpes. I tell you, the viral cause, herpes simplex virus, huh? herpes genitalis. Another is syphilis, syphilis, that are syphilitic ulcer, and another is lymphogenum heronum. This, this three, the, these three are the common. And I already mentioned, out of this differential diagnosis, genital herpes ulcer is painful, but with no inguinal lymph node involvement or no bubo, but which is 
present in case of Shankar. Bubo unilateral one side, liquidal lymph node adenopathy with ulceration. And severe ulcer we cannot rule out. It is a, usually painless, usually painless. And then there will be no lymph adenopathy like this. Lymphogenic venilum also painless, also painless. And sometimes other causes there, but we can remember only these three genital ulcer, uh, genital, genital herpes, syphilitic, and lymphogenic venilum. Okay, please go to the next slide. Okay. So, what are the complications that may present to you as a, a case of Shankroid? It is a painful inguinal adenitis, I told you before, and a spontaneous rupture of inguinal bubos with occurrence of large abscess and fistula formation. So, this is very important. So, any patient of Shankroid, if there is any bubo, don't, at one point, you must remember, don't excise it or don't try to, don't try to, 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 to eliminate the person. One thing you can do, aspirate the collection through by piercing the needle through a normal skin. Don't pierce the lesion. Huh? Pierce it through the surrounding normal skin. Otherwise, the ulcer will not heal uh, rapidly and it will lead to fistula formations. And one thing one remember that the spreading of hemophilus dugri to distant sites, we call it kissing ulcers or extragenital lesions due to autoinoclusion. Huh? If you touch it, if you touch the ulcer, and again, scratch it on the other area, then the area, you know, might lead to also ulcer formation, in, especially in case of male patients. And uh, one complication is that if you have normal behavior, you might get also oral ulceration, it's a visual lesion, especially in HIV positive patients. And uh, this infection sometimes also su uh, super bacterial infection might be there, leading to extensive destruction. And uh, Shankroid patient, there is a, if you detect, also screen for HIV because the chance of HIV transmitted with this patient is much more, three to tenfold more than the other patients. Okay, go to next slide, please. Okay, so how we treat this is WHO guideline. WHO guideline, uh, the treatment of choice is azithromycin. Or Shankroid, one gram oral in a single dose is okay. Or you can choose septragion, septragion, 250 milligram IM in a single dose. Or ciprofloxacin, nowadays we are not using. And uh, this, these two are the most important. Erythromycin also, it causes a gastrointestinal intolerance. And WHO guideline is azithromycin or septragion. Okay, please go to next slide. So another disease is lympho LGB, lymphogranulomanidium, and uh, it is a disease caused by chlamydia trachomatis. It is endemic in Africa, Southeast Asia, South and Central America, and rare in developed countries nowadays. And recent outbreaks are found among men who have sex with men, homosexual persons, are more susceptible to develop lymphogranulomanidium. They are clinically manifest as the inguinal and anorectal symptoms. And there is hematologenous spread with manifestation of systemic manifestors. We can also detect this diagnosis by organism and by serology. And here also treatment of choice is doxycycline or erythromycin is given, doxycycline is given. And we prefer doxycycline, uh, 100 milligram BIP for two two weeks. Okay, please go to the next slide. Okay, here we will we'll see some photo. Here you see here, lymphogranuloma venerium presenting as a soft painless ulcer. Soft painless ulcer on the prepuce, on the prepuce. Soft painless, I remember, I told you before, this is painless, this is painless, eh? this soft ulcer. And the famous bilateral so involvement of inguinal lymph node, both sides, both sides. No other STI uh, will present like this, bilateral inguinal lymph node involvement. Only this lymphogranular venerium is present with bilateral lymph node involvement. And one unilateral involvement is usually found in Shankroy. And the ulcer here is painless. Okay, please go to 
Next slide. So treatment of lymphoma venerium, first line is oral doxycycline, and I told you before, and the 100 milligram VIT is given for three weeks. Second line, if someone, yeah, I remember, I tell you, some people are sensitive, are hypersensitive to doxycycline, we find it. Eh? If you give you doxycycline, they will present with different type of skin reactions, eh? including fixed dark reactions and other reactions also there. In that case, you, know, you cannot give doxycycline. And then in that case, the second line option is oral erythromycin. Oral erythromycin, though it causes sometimes causes gastric irritation, but it is a you know, good option. We can give it 500 milligram four times daily for three weeks. And the third line option is oral erythromycin, one gram once weekly for three weeks. Okay, please go to the next slide. Another disease, we call it Ganoma inguinali. So in a, in a summarized way, Ganoma inguinali or donovanosis is a chronic ulcerative debilitating disease that mainly affects the genital organs. And this disease is caused by gram-negative bacteria. Gram-negative bacteria and affects mostly people of lower social economic, economic groups and diagnosis is made by demonstrating intracellular donovan bodies on histology so please go to the next slide what is the treatment option for ganoma inguinally here also the treatment option is doxycycline 100 milligram twice daily cdc guideline American recommendation and WHO guideline, they are also giving azithromycin or doxycycline. In some cases, they are, uh, we have, can give other options also, uh, ciprofloxacin or cotrimoxazole, tripethopin, sulfamethoxazole, but we are not using this one. Uh, the first one is the better, doxycycline or azithromycin. Okay, please go to the next slide. So now we are switching to gonococcal infections or bacterial vaginosis. So more in America, more than 20 million new sexually STI occur annually. The chlamydia is currently, in the United States, chlamydia is currently the most common reported STI. In the United States. It is also the most common cause of pelvic inflammatory disease in female and leading to different types of complications. So. Very important. Chlamydia is currently the most common reported STI. It is also the most common cause of pelvic inflammatory disease in female. And the presenting symptoms is urethritis is a common presenting symptoms, both men and female, both men and female. And gonorrhea is usually presenting as a purulent discharge, milky discharge, purulent discharge, painful micturations. But in female, in some, most of the cases, it remains asymptomatic. So it is unnoticed because we are in the inner OPD, mostly we are getting male patients seeking treatment because suddenly after histo exposure, they present painful micturition and purulent urethane pictures. So they are afraid and usually coming rapidly to our OPD and seeking for the treatment. But the female patients, these symptoms are usually asymptomatic and unnoticed. And they are not coming to treatment. And if it is untreated, it will lead to severe complications. The most important complication is the pelvic inflammatory disease, leading to infertility, tubal blockage, and other sorts of. And all this one, uh, so the gonococcal infections, in female, it is unnoticed and uh, diagnosis can usually be, we, we take the discharge on a glass slide and do, we are doing gram stain, we're doing you know, some staining and then we can see some, in case of Neisseria gonorrhea, multiple gram negative diplococci within nuclear leukocytes within the cells. Uh, so please go to next slide.
प्लीज गो टू नेक्स्ट लाइफ प्लीज सो वी हैव टू द गोनोरिया गोनोकल इन्फेक्शन द इटोलिया विलोसिक एसेंट इज नाइसेरिया गोनोरी इट इज अ ग्राम नेगेटिव डिप्लोकोकस ग्राम नेगेटिव डिप्लोकोकस इफ यू डू ग्राम स्टेनिंग और स्टेनिंग वी फाउंड द we found we found the diplococci within polymorph nuclear leukocytes and human are the only natural reservoir of the organisms humans are the only natural reservoir of the organisms and transmissions is really bisexually from partner who either is asymptomatic or minimal symptom that is the female female are the mainly asymptomatic carrier and most men are getting after sex with that you know, multiple partners or unprotected sex they are get, getting this type of gonorrhea and sometimes neonates may get this gonorrhea when they are exposed to infected secretions at birth canal so it is very important this is very important is screening is very important in case of pregnancy in case of female and if it is there sometimes we can recommend it to not uh, vaginal delivery we can recommend it to cesarean sections and onococcal infections if it is untreated sometimes it may lead to disseminated gonococcal infection <coughs> okay please go to next slide <coughs> so this is the photo this is the when the patients are coming we are asking for gram staining ask to take the urethral discharge and do a smear and we can detect this type of diplococci gram negative diplococci within the polymorph nuclear polymorph nuclear leukocyte 1 yeah uh, this is smear we can see also some you know dark dots dot are there these are the gram positive cocci these are the not there these are the other gram positive cocci okay please go to next slide Hmm. So this is the real picture. You know, most of the patients are coming like this: acute gonorrhea in male, presenting as creamy purulent discharge from the urethra, and the patients are very afraid. And one more thing is thing that you can see the lens penis is swollen, is swollen, and including uh, this this picture is swelling of the distal shaft. Uh, we call it bull head cap, bull head cap. You know, this is also a. manifestation of urethral gonococcal infection in male and patient sometimes presenting with creamy discharge sometimes presenting with this uh, glands penis swelling or sometimes coming with scrotal swelling so this is called bull head cap bull head clap bull head clap this one we going to call it bull head clap okay please go to next slide I I I told you before that sometimes gonorrhea infection, if untreated or lately treated, it will be disseminated. Disseminated gonococcal infections. You can see here the hemorrhagic necrotic papule on the fingers. Yeah, one, two, three. These are disseminated gonococcal infections picture. Okay, please go to next slide. Please go to next slide. So how we is going to cause infections? Going to cause infections, you know. Before before we were treating with the ciprofloxacin, but nowadays ciprofloxacin is resistant. Resistant. So the following are the treatment options: one dose of ceftriaxone, one twenty five milligram. I am, or tablet Cefixim, four hundred milligram per hour is sufficient. Sufficient. And alternate single dose cefalosporin regimens may be considered on an individual basis. And also we can give other Cefixim, Cefraxim. These are also we can give. But those patients who are uh, allergic to cefalosporin, we, we have an another good option. This is called spectinomycin. It is very, you know, in our my practice before we are practicing this spectinomycin. This is very effective, hundred percent effective. 
hundred percent effective. And sometimes this septicemia exam effective, but not hundred percent. And in all cases of gonococcal infection, is gonococcal infection is usually associated with chlam chlamydia. So the treatment of chlamydia should be added with the gonococcal infection treatment. So remember it, please. Uh, any gonococcal patient coming with milky discharge or purulent discharge, treat this patient for gonorrhea and also as well as for chlamydia. In most cases, in most cases, chlamydia is positive, but detection of chlamydia is very difficult in some cases, but laboratory test is difficult. So we are treating this gonococcal patient initially, treatment for gonorrhea with septraxon or cefixin, followed by treatment of chlamydia with azithromycin or doxycycline. That is the way I prefer doxycycline, 100 milligram twice a day for one to 10, one, one week or 10 days. Okay, please go to the next slide. Okay, so it is, I, I have also written it here, that is the, uh, recommended regimen for gonococcal treatment, cefixin 400 milligram in a single dose, or ceftriaxone. I prefer to give a little bit more, eh? 250 milligram, 250 milligram IM, 250 milligram IM in a single dose. Ciprofloxacin, I told you before, we are not using today now, nowadays because it is almost resistant and already regimen is pectinomycin. It's a wonderful drug if you get it. Is almost 100% effective, 100% effective is pectinomycin, two gram IM in a single dose. And in all cases, treatment of chlamydia must, must be treated with doxycycline or azithromycin. So please go to next slide. Uh, yes, this is a slide for treatment of chlamydia infection. Here is in the chart, azithromycin one gram per oral in a single dose, or doxycycline 100 milligram twice per day for seven days. If patient is sensitive, we can give change to azithromycin 500 milligram four times daily for seven days. Or sometimes we can give ofloxacin or levofloxacin. What about in, uh, in uh, pregnant women? If it is detected in pregnancy, then what will you do? We cannot give doxycycline or tetracycline in pregnancy. Please remember, doxycycline and tetracycline cannot be given in pregnant lady. So the recommended treatment option for pregnant lady. So recommended treatment for pregnant women is azithromycin one gram. One gram per or single dose. Or amoxicillin we can give, amoxicillin we can give 500 milligram per oral three times a day for seven days. If gonococcal infection is caught in case of neonate, what do you need to do? Recommended treatment option for ophthalmia neonatalum. Erythromycin based, uh, uh, 50 milligram per kg per day divided in four doses for 14 days. Okay, please, next slide. So, uh, this is uh, one message I want to give you, that the effective management of STI, sexually transmitted infection, consists not only of antimicrobial therapy, but also comprehensive consideration and care of patients of reproductive health is very important. So, what is the meaning of that? But only if you give the treatment, it will not be effective. We have to counsel the patient. We have to trace out the partners. All the partners, including the patient, should be treated and we should reassure the patient. Eh? So effective management of STI consists not only of antimicrobial therapy, but also comprehensive considerations and care of the patients of the reproductive health. That means that is the, <coughs> if the patient is a female one, we should take in extra cautions, whether she is carrying one STD or any other STD, and her partners should be screened and this patient should be repeated follow-ups eh? because you know they are <coughs> they may got it again reinfections and we will advise the patient on sexual behavior eh? better to have one sexual partner the our in our country the religious teaching is very important religious teaching is very important eh? if patient 
is a uh, have is a only one sexual partner and uh, religious bindings he or she will not get in std and uh, if any patient want, have, wants to have uh, extra sex uh, extra marital sex and the other things then promotion of condom is better promotion of condom is better and uh, partner notification and partner should be treated also so before <coughs> before finishing that nowadays who guidelines are there they are may come um, they are making it is a syndromic approach they are making it is a syndromic approach like they are making syndromic approach like if any 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 female patient coming syndromic approach coming with vaginal discharge think about vaginal discharge this, that may be symptoms of unusual vaginal discharge vaginal itching dyspareunia pain on urination this 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 dysuria dysuria or dyspareunia so this patient may come with abnormal vaginal discharge and most common of these cases is vaginitis vaginitis trichomonas maybe or sometimes candidiasis also here you should remember one point the candidiasis in case of female also is very important yeah these patients are more susceptible in case of who are immunocompromised or uncontrolled blood sugars and in case of vaginal discharge we also think about serpicitis and the serpicitis common cause is gonorrhea and chlamydia i already mentioned so vaginal discharge should be treated thinking about trichomoniasis candidiasis gonorrhea and chlamydia gonorrhea and chlamydia and if in a urethral discharge urethral discharge coming with dysuria frequent urination frequent urinations and urethral discharge usually in the milk urethra milk urethra think about gonorrhea and also chlamydia and i already mentioned that gonorrhea any gonorrhea should be treated for chlamydia also and then syndromic approach right? this is the syndromic approach on wh guideline <coughs> to manage sti syndromic approach in the as a genital ulcer genital ulcer or genital sore so the most common causes i already mentioned syphilis chancroid and genital herpes these three are the common one in our country also so in our country aspect syphilis genital ulcer causes are syphilis chancroid and genital herpes i already mentioned syphilis ulcer is painless and usually solitary ulcer chancroid ulcer is painful but the initial lesion is present with inguinal bubo which is not present in case of syphilis another is genital ulcer uh, due to genital herpes genital herpes genital ulcer genital herpes related but the primary lesion here is not papule is the vesicle vesicular fluid another any patient coming with lower abdominal pain lower abdominal pain in case of female please they have lower abdominal pain in dyspareunia and there might signs of vaginal discharge there might sign of vaginal discharge lower abdominal tenderness or palpation sometimes there might some temperature body temperature 38 degrees centigrade eh? most common causes are gonorrhea chlamydia or mixed infections another syndrome we approach is scrotal swelling scrotal swelling scrotal pain and scrotal swelling most important causes are this is mainly found in a male person uh, gonorrhea and chlamydia inguinal bubo that means the inguinal lymph node involvement inguinal lymph node involvement painful and last inguinal lymph nodes painful and last inguinal lymph nodes with fluctuation sometimes abscess formation or fistula most important cause is lymphogranuloma venerea lymphogranuloma venerea and chancroid i showed i i have already shown a picture lymphogranuloma venerea usually bilateral inguinal lymph node involvement usually bilateral inguinal lymph node involvement but in case of chancroid usually unilateral usually unilateral inguinal lymph node involvement thank you sir and the shop to me you can connect by this you know tell government of gonorrhea thank you ma'am get it with swollen eyelid swollen eyelid discharge maybe can open it is my eyelid purulent discharge 
থাকতে পারে কারণ উল্টা পাল্টা হাউস নাম্বার দেওয়া বুঝছে এইদিকে বোধ হয় এই সারিতেই বোধ হয় আপনাদের কোন কোয়েশ্চেন আছে Any more questions, please? Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. আপলোড করে দিবে ভিডিওটা আপনি যদি আপনার লেকচারটা পিডিএফ ভার্সনটা আইটি কে পাঠিয়ে দেন ওরা ওইটাও ইয়ে করে দিবে আর কি যাতে স্টুডেন্টরা পরে আবার এটা রিভাইজ করতে পারে আর কি थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच আমাদের সাথে থাকার জন্য আর কি थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू जी सलाम अलैकुम सलाम अलैकुम सलाम अलैकुम थैंक यू তাহলে আমার মনে সেশন আমরা এন্ড করতে পারি কারো যদি প্রশ্ন না থাকে जी सलाम अलैकुम তাহলে আমরা সেশন এন্ড করে দিচ্ছি